Welcome to the video guys. We got something here that is just as bad, if not worse, than the current embarrassment going on in the English channel that is now being reported on a daily basis by the mainstream media. Well it seems the government has started trying to remove some of these criminals who took the small boats across the channel this year, but are now being blocked by low-life pond scum law firms launching legal challenges against the government removing criminals from this country who broke the law to get here in the first place. Personally, I despise these law firms with a passion, not only because they are clearly scum, but because each time they do this, and they do it often, it costs the UK taxpayer millions fighting against it. In my opinion, these law firms are as bad as Serco, who are taking public money to house these criminals in four-star hotels. And let's not forget the government who pay for it with our money while veterans sleep on the streets. Well, The Guardian reported earlier that 20 due to be sent packing tomorrow have had legal challenges launched by these dirty low-life fuck pig law firms, so they won't be going anywhere. Of course, we know our justice system is weak as your average soy latte drinking Starbucks customer, so they will be given leave to remain by the courts and free trips to British football club stadiums just after winning the Premier League by tosspot charities that make me sick. Now, before we get into that, we have all heard the media and left-wing shit weasels screaming about desperate asylum seekers and how they're destitute and trying to get away from war and all this madness and they have nothing but the clothes on their back. Which we all knew was bollocks from day dot, but Political Light covered it yesterday like it was an exclusive scoop for them that actually made me laugh. At this point, it's common knowledge to everyone outside the media it seems, which made me chuckle, but we don't really care about that. We care about this Guardian article, which headlines, Asylum Seekers Launch Legal Challenge Against Their Removal From The UK. Well, the asylum seekers didn't do it. The piss poor law firms, as I said, are the ones who actually did it. A group of asylum seekers due to be flown out of the UK this week in a home office operation targeting people who have arrived on small boats have launched a mass legal challenge to their removal, The Guardian has learned. Up to 20 people are due to be removed on the charter flight on Wednesday, the first since the coronavirus lockdown to specifically target asylum seekers who have crossed the channel from mainland Europe by small boats or other clandestine means. At least 17 asylum seekers facing removal have been preparing legal action to prevent them being put on a flight, although it is understood the Home Office has already deferred the removal directions for at least five people initially scheduled to be on it. The asylum seekers lodged pre-action protocols on Monday, the first stage in the judicial review process to try to halt the Home Office action to remove them. Which, like I said, is not the asylum seekers doing it at all, it is actually these piss poor law firms that I was slagging off earlier. Those involved in the legal action come from countries including Afghanistan, Iran, Kuwait, Yemen and almost all are known to have travelled to the UK in small boats, so they're all a bunch of boat wankers and once again these law firms are trying to get them to stay here, when obviously they have absolutely no right to do so. Some are survivors of torture and some have serious mental health problems as a result of the persecution they have endured in their home countries and on their hazardous journeys in search of safety. Well, they was in France, that is safety there, so they don't get to stay here at the end of the day, they have no right and we definitely don't want people with mental health being brought here. If you ask me, we have enough people in this country with mental health problems, why don't you take care of the veterans who need it, or the people from the UK who could actually do with the help? Never mind trying to help every Tom, Dick and Harry from every other country around the world, that is not our responsibility. The Guardian spoke to one of the 24-year-old asylum seekers from Yemen who was expecting to be put on a flight on Wednesday but has had his removal directions deferred. He said he had been deeply traumatised by the conflict in Yemen and had crossed deserts on his journey to reach the UK. That doesn't make a single bit of difference. At the end of the day, he's passed through multiple safe countries to get here and that is the end of it. He has been on suicide watch since being arrested by the Home Office and detained on the 30th of July, so he's costing us even more money. That is obviously another reason why they should be here. He said he had spent just a few weeks in Calais before paying a smuggler about £700 for a place on a boat that carried 17 people across the channel. No, it carried them halfway before the British border farce went and picked them up. The smugglers were very aggressive, kicked us and told us to hurry up as we went through the area called the jungle to get on the boat. They took our belongings off us before we got on the boat. I was very relieved when I reached the UK and felt I was safe at last, but then I got detained. Well, you're lucky that you got detained. You should have just been sent straight back across the channel in a bigger boat with the rest of them. He said he was so distraught about being detained that he has refused food 
for several days, he is being monitored round the clock by detention centre staff because of his mental health and trauma problems. Which goes back to what I said earlier about these scumbag lawyers who are doing this shit, keeping these people here, costing us yet more money like they don't cost enough. Tufiki Hussein of Duncan Lewis Solicitors, which is challenging many of the forced removals planned for Wednesday, said, All the clients we represent have strong claims for international protection, yet they have them for France or in an EU country where they first landed. They are, by definition, refugees. No, they are not. They are economic migrants. They've passed through many safe countries to get here. They are not refugees. They do not fall under that definition at the end of the day. They also have very strong reasons as to why their claims ought to be processed in the UK. No, they don't. You just want them to because you know you're going to get paid a shitload of money. Rather than vilifying refugees who enter the UK, they are not refugees. They are criminal migrants plotting potentially unlawful ways in which to push them back. The Home Secretary, Pretty Patel, ought to spend time developing safe and durable routes for refugees to claim asylum. Yes, she can do that when any of these countries actually border this one until such time they are not our problem. End of story. Celia Clark, the director of the charity Bail for Immigration Detainees, said, We fear that this cavalier move is part of a strategy to rush through as many removals as possible under Dublin regulations, which will cease to be a part of the UK law after the Brexit date. This is incredibly risky and flies in the face of last week's health advice from the government, which was that we probably had reached the limit of opening up society. Which, if we have reached the limit of opening up society, then we definitely can't be taking more people in from other societies, you complete and utter idiot. Talk about completely rubbishing your own argument there like a tosser. And I tell you what, if this is the government's idea of rushing through as many removals as possible, then they really ain't doing a very good job, are they? This is only 20, and once again, the piss poor UK legal system has fucked us over. A Home Office spokesman said, we want to see migrants who have illegally and dangerously crossed the channel return to mainland Europe. Then fucking do it. The government has an 80 seat majority. You can actually change the law to make it happen, especially at the end of the year when Brexit is over, which Boris has said he's planning to do and I might cover in a video but of course anything Boris said needs to be taken with all the salt in the Dead Sea. Now obviously as I've said I think it's the scummiest of scummy moves to actually try and stop these asylum seekers from being taken back to where they should be or at least the EU in this case. I'm not sure that they should be there either but that's not really our problem. These law firms and charities actually make me sick and should be charged for every single time that they have tried to stop these migrants from being taken over there and cost the UK public a lot of money. Obviously, The Guardian, as we know, are a bunch of scumbags and are gleefully loving this little article here because, of course, it's costing us money and it's stopping the government from doing what the people of this country want. Not that the government actually does anything we want, it would seem, aside from the Brexit situation, though that's still up in the air, as we know, and could go either way. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off.